Hey everyone, welcome to the Nonfiction Shelf series here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Once a month, I will feature a nonfiction title that I've read during the current month. This is the first of 12 nonfiction episodes planned for 2019. If you enjoy this episode and would like to see what nonfiction title I'll be discussing next month, please be sure to subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. I am your host, Tamara Ford, and if you'd like to chat with me about the book reviewed in this episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction. A quick note before I get started, if you enjoy this show and the content that I produce, please consider becoming a Shelf Addiction Patreon subscriber. You'll gain access to the exclusive Patreon-only content, including secret live streams, bonus episodes, and more, especially for you. There is also a Ko-fi account if you prefer to make a one-time donation. To find both of these, please go to shelfaddiction.com and click on the Support Us tab. Alrighty, let's jump into it. This month's book is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing by Marie Kondo. This is the first book in her magic cleaning series. All right, so I did listen to this on audiobook and I was super excited that I did. Let me give you the stats about this book. This book comes in at four hours and 50 minutes on audiobook or 224 pages. It was released January 6, 2015 by Tandor Audio. The hardcover of the book was originally published January 15, 2011. There have been many republished versions of this title and Marie Kondo is Japanese, so the original was also written in Japanese. They have since, you know, translated this into several different languages, including English. With the audiobook, I was able to hear narrator Emily Wu Zeller, you know, speak this in English, and it was very enjoyable. So I'm sure you've heard of this by now. It's been all the buzz in 2019. It kicked off the year people talking about this book, and I think it had a little bit of something to do with Netflix. They also released a series of the same name. But first, let me just say, I did not learn about this via Netflix. I think I was just scrolling through books that people should read. And this was on that list. And because I wanted to do some tidying, I thought this would be a great place to start. So the life changing magic of tidying up is all about the bulk reduction method, not tidying every day, every week. It's kind of like go big or go home. This is more of a how to, in my opinion, instead of a like soul altering way to think of life or how to think of tidiness. Um, It's in a way that makes permanent changes to your life, but it does also affect your happiness. Putting your house in order, putting your past in order, puts your happiness first. So not only am I sharing my opinion about this book, but I'm also sharing my thoughts on how it translated to my own home and a few thoughts on the TV show of the same name. After I started this audiobook, the very next day, I saw a commercial about the Netflix show, which was a really awesome coincidence. So I was really glad that I chose this one to use as my first one, just because the timing was just perfect. So as I think about high level, what I thought about this book, I think the key takeaway was work fast, dump and work. Don't him and haw around. Um, think about what makes you happy. And the more you do that, when you look at your different items, then you will definitely find it easier to do. I found that applying Marie's methods was very easy to execute. And I found that the longer I did it, like I said, the more I became at ease at it. And I recently did this with my mother's home. Actually, me and my sisters joined together over the holiday and we did a mass tidy of our family home. It was 30 plus years of stuff from three kids, from babies to kids to adults. We found high school keepsakes. We found all three of our prom dresses and prom keepsakes and we promptly threw them all all out. Classes, activities for three kids, then three grandkids. No, you know, just no, it was too much 
stuff and it wasn't junk and it wasn't, it was just a little clutter and it felt great to toss the stuff in the trash or give it away without thinking about it too much. Things that me nor my sisters have seen in years and years and years. So it was a great relief to kind of go, you touch your things, you reminisce and you have a good laugh and then you throw it away and it's great. We found a lot of keepsakes that were great. Like we, we want to hold on to like photos. There were photos kind of scattered all over the house and it will help us, you know, organize these and keep the memories of the photos. And actually using Marie's, you know, way of sorting photos was actually pretty helpful as well. So the biggest, I guess, takeaways from her lessons would be keep only what you love. You know, like I was saying, you go through, you kind of touch everything and you feel what makes me happy. What do I really love? And start with the clothes. I, I took her advice with my own home. Now with my mother's home, I did not take that advice, but I knew that I wanted to clear out my closet I have a walk-in closet and while I thought it was, you know, essentially, you know, more than enough space over the eight years that I've been in this home, the closet is just starting to, you know, expand and, you know, things are falling out of the closet. It's so much stuff. So I knew that I wanted to do a mass tidy of my own master closet because of the work we did at my mother's house, which led me here to Marie Kondo. Her philosophy is to dump all of your clothes out at once from every room in every closet, the drawers, everything. And that was a little overwhelming for me uh, just because, I mean, it's a big deal. Now I'm going to refer to the show right quick. When you see these people in their own homes, pulling out every single piece of clothing that they own from every closet, every drawer, everywhere, pulling it all together in a huge pile. It is very overwhelming. And the fact that these people, obviously you take a long time to go through this. It's weeks and weeks and sometimes months and months for them to tidy their whole, whole home, depending on their personal situation. But for me, I think the idea of that is good and solid, but I don't think that necessarily applies to me. And I say that because of this. I am not a clutterer usually. I don't like to hoard a lot of things usually. I'd like to think that, you know, I'm able to let go of older things without too much trouble. So for me, I did not have a ton of clothes in multiple closets and multiple dressers. I just had the one closet. So for me, you know, while I did pull everything out, I didn't do it quite in the method that she said, meaning dump everything on my bed because hello, I needed to go to bed in it that night. So I need to use that bed. So I decided to just do section at a time, but I did follow, you know, some of her other things like using the drawers, how to learn how to fold in a small upright way, um, hang your clothes an upward arrow from left to right with your heaviest and longest items in the left and your lightest and brightest items to the right. It's kind of that whole, it feels kind of feng shui in a way where, you know, the way you place your clothes, it makes you feel good. It looks good and it's nice and tidy. So I did take those things away. One of the odder philosophies I came across re regarding um, clothes and how to, is how to treat your socks. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I ball up my socks. I do. But Marie is a big, you know, anti baller upper of socks. Uh, you, do, you are not to ball them up in a row. You're supposed to fold them. You know, if you ball them up, they can't relax. They need to relax after being on your feet all day, Marie says. Plus it stretches the fabric. Now that is what was most important to me. And I never thought, oh my gosh, I'm stretching the fabric out by balling the socks like this. You know, when you crumble them up and then you stuff them in, both of them inside of one part of the ankle of the one sock, you know what I'm talking about. But I've never, never in life thought to, you know, try to roll them like a sushi and lay them on the edge like you would clothing. Uh, it's very different, but I like how it looks, to be honest. And she gave like some really interesting ideas about not tying your stockings in a knot in the middle, uh, because I guess it means something that's not that great. So it, again, they want, she wants you to roll them like sushi and store on their edge. And that is something, oh, to me, the folding was the worst. I even started to fold um, some of my sheets in her method. And I have a king size bed 
Oh, it was so difficult to fold those sheets. She needs to have a section like somewhere on YouTube. Maybe I'll search for it on lessons on how to fold, you know, in her way. Now, that is what's really cool about the book. She did give very, dis, you know, very direct instructions on how to fold things and how to place things. And while I was listening, I thought in my mind, oh, this is so easy. Great. And then later when I'm trying to execute those without help, I found that I had a little bit of trouble recalling the exact method to fold them so that they came out in the proper way. So that was a little bit of a learning curve. But, you know, I liked how she explained it and it translated well to my closet in real life. I'm also of the school of thought, same as Kondo, that, you know, storing away winter clothes is just too much. I was glad that she didn't recommend that. Instead, she said, eliminate it. I used to have winter and summer clothing bins, you know, that everyone stores in their basement. But when I moved into my home, I figured, I don't think I need to do that. I'm just going to put everything in the closet. And when I saw that she kind of has the same thoughts on that, I was super excited. In the end, guys, when I ended up clearing out my closet, I threw away a total of five large bags of clothes. And by throw away, I mean donate it, right? I threw away the things that were, you know, maybe a little tattered or beyond repair and everything that was in great condition, I gave away. And that ended up being five bags of clothes. And I gave you a high level opinion of the book and how I think I used some the biggest parts of the book in tackling my closet. So she has a couple of different ways that she wants you to sort other things like books and photos and music and, you know, papers. And she's very specific about how to do it, just like she was with the clothing. And again, it's always primary on your mind uh, that you ask, does this spark joy when you pick things up? And I think you know, her method of putting all the books on the floor was, you know, similar to putting all of the clothes in a pile. You want to stimulate the things and expose them to air by moving them around, according to Kondo. And I guess I can see that because, you know, as a book lover, I have shelves full of books. Now, this is something that I want to tackle next. But the thought of just getting rid of so many books, it just kind of hurts my heart a little bit. Now, I do know that there was actually an article uh, listed out there. I think I will post that below in the show notes so you guys can read it yourself. But there was an article where it said book lovers were really mad at Kondo for how she said to handle the books. A lot of book lovers are upset because Kondo says that the value of books is in the information they contain and there is no meaning in them if they're just on your shelves. That's kind of a loose quote of what she said. And if you have a lot of unread books, you know, you think you're going to read them one day, Kondo doesn't want you to keep them. Uh, She has a method called the Kanmari method and she owns no more than 30 books and she considers that number ideal. She also suggests that if only part of a book sparks joy, to consider tearing out those pages. Um, Okay, I gotta say I'm not a fan of that. I'm not going to tear up books. Maybe that's more for informational books or educational books or nonfiction books, but I'm definitely not going to tear out, you know, a passage in a story. You can forget that. Um, But the idea of only having 30 books, I probably have 10 times that. Uh, So I... (sighs) I understand why people are upset, you know, because some people and honestly, my books are my my book collection is mild compared to a lot of others. All of my books fit on the shelf. I give away bags of books every year because I get new books in and I give some away because I don't want books piled up on my floor in every corner and all of this. I'm not a book hoarder, but I like my shelves full And that means I have approximately 300 books. But again, it's not over the house. So, I mean, I I understand where she's coming from and I understand the philosophy behind it, but I don't necessarily agree with the handling of the book. Same with, you know, others that also kind of are angry about that aspect of things. But 
you know, what can you do? You do what what you do. If you are not an avid reader, if books don't bring you joy, if seeing a lot of books on a bookshelf doesn't make you happy, then go for broke and get rid of everything except for 30 books. I I think you should do it. Uh, But yeah, so I wanted to point out the books. I wanted to point out, you know, this is a real way that she wants you to live. Does this bring me joy? Does it make me happy? And you know, even with papers, she has like the same method of sorting papers in a way. She has three groups, what you're currently using, what you need short term and what you need to keep forever. And she wants you to deal with those in a way that does not keep a lot of papers around. Like she has minimal things. (laughs) And I, you know, and I used to keep a lot of papers as well, but now I don't. I actually agree with her when it comes to how to sort papers and keeping papers, because if you don't know, I am a planner nerd. I have planners for every year. I've used a planner yearly since the 11th grade when my father bought me my first Franklin Covey planner. And of course, with Franklin Covey planners, they sell planner storage cases. So I used to store my yearly planners. And when I was at my mother's house, I took a photo of all of the planner storage things lined up in my old closet. I had like 10 years worth of planners in there that I would never in my life look back at. I think, you know, that was a little bit nuts. Like thinking back, why would you buy storage containers for old planners that you're never going to look at again? Now, when it comes to journals, I know people feel differently about journals and I feel differently about journals, but just plain old day to day, um, you know, time management planners, that just seems crazy. So even now that I'm doing a little bit of different, you know, more creative planning and journaling, I found that I've been keeping the last couple of years of planners again, and I just don't want to do it. So I went through my planners in my library and I started discarding them. So, I mean, I really like that what she has to say about a lot of different topics as well as gifts. And I agree with her on this as well. Throw out gifts that don't bring you joy. All the gifts laying around in drawers and closets, things that you never use. You know, you need to be thankful uh, for the joy you felt when you received it and then throw it out or give it away. That resonates with me so much because, you know, people have the best intentions when they buy you gifts. And I have feel have the best intentions when I buy others gifts. But if it's not something they want, please give it to someone that will want it or return it or whatever. Please don't keep my gift in a closet. I want you to feel that I was thinking about you when I bought this gift, but move on. I, I feel the same way for myself because sometimes, you know, people give you gifts that just don't really align with what you want or, you know, they're not your style. They don't fit your decor or whatever the reason. If it doesn't resonate and it doesn't bring you joy, think about the the, the feeling behind the gift and not the gift itself. And be sure, thank it. She says, thank it and then give it away. <laughs> that is so funny. And I mean, literally, so I really, really agree with that, you know, philosophy. Same for empty boxes. She has her code on that. You know, she's like, don't keep boxes for electronics. And I have this whole conversation with my husband about that because he likes to keep boxes for electronics. So, you know, it's just that whole thing. So, you know, she even talks about like spare buttons, throw those out, lose change, put it in a wallet, not a piggy bank. You know, she really is not about collecting things, you know, spare sets of bedding. Don't keep a bunch of extra spare sets of bedding when you only have guests once or twice a year. You know, all of these things make total and complete sense. They really do. Um, but to see how people, you know, take to these philosophies on her Netflix show, was really inspiring in a way. You know, we have families from all walks of life, all different kinds of families from, you know, widowers to, you know, young families starting out, moving from big homes to little homes, people that are a little hoarder like in tendencies versus people who just have a lot of things from a lot of years. And, you know, 
to see people let go of things and feel that weight lift off of them, that was a good feeling. I think Marie Kondo is the cutest, man. She is the cutest. She, she seems so nice. She seems so genuine. But I gotta say, the very first time she walked into someone's house and she sits on the floor and she's like, oh, I would like to, you know, introduce myself to the house and thank the house. And, you know, she's doing this and she's like almost doing a prayer in the house. I kind of was thrown by that a little bit. I don't really connect like that to my house, but I get it. I get what she's trying to do. I think she's trying to set the tone for the energy, you know, to release things from the house and thank the house for, you know, what it's giving you and be a good house and all that stuff. But I can't see myself sitting on the floor and thanking my house and all that. So with that said, take what you will from the book. Take what you will from the show. It was fun to watch. It was actually a lot of great things that I picked up from the book that I will utilize forever. So it was really worth the read. Um, Although at times I did feel like it was a little wordy and repetitive, uh, you just take notes and, you know, maybe bookmark the sections where she actually tells you how to do certain things in a specific way. I think those will be the highlights for me and the most important thing. And definitely check it out on audiobook. Uh, The narrator did a great performance. I really liked her tone. I liked her voice. I liked her pacing. I only had to speed it up, I think, to 1.25. I think that it was a short book you know, overall, which was good because we didn't need much more. The length of it was pretty good, but honestly, it could have been cut a couple of pages, just maybe 20 pages or so of things that felt like they were repetitive. But I would recommend this. If you have a home that you know needs a massive tidy, or even if you are a tidy person and want to make sure you keep that going forward, definitely check out The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And don't miss the Netflix original series as well, because, you know, I find it very interesting to see. Not that I'm going to keep watching it forever. I think, I don't know if she gets a second season. I probably won't watch, but that's just because I've gotten what I've needed from it. You know, I will thank the show. Thank you, Netflix. Thank you, Marie Kondo. And I will pass it on to you and you can learn something from it. And, you know, again, take it with a grain of salt, take what you can use you know, and try to really think about the things that make you happy in your home and get rid of everything that doesn't make you happy. That is all I'm going to say on this topic. I feel like I've rambled for 22 minutes, 23 minutes, but I hope that you were able to feel how I felt about this book. And I will give you the rating before I sign off. I rated this book three out of five bookmarks. It was a good read. It was solid. I got great information. What I think this book is for everyone. No, you know, was everything in this book, you know, so life altering? No, but a lot of it did ring true for me. And a lot of it did reinforce good habits that I had. And a lot of it did make me feel differently about keeping certain things when I really didn't need to. So that's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the very first nonfiction shelf episode. And I will catch you guys here again next month with my next nonfiction read. Until then, happy reading, guys. Take care. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.